Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, how is it going? Good old Conflicts here. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I'm going to be talking about my five hopes for the future of ETS2. SES is doing a great job of ETS2 and I hope they continue to do so, and that it becomes even better with these five things potentially coming in the future. Now, just a quick note before we do get started in this video, I do have a video out already on my top five hopes for the future of ATS, which you can check out by clicking up in the top right hand corner now. But without further ado, let us get straight into this video with number one. Yeah, number one, the Red OT coming soon. <laughs> Right, in all seriousness, number one, new trucks coming into the game. I know some of you are not going to like me for that, but you know, it's been since two, it's been two years, man, leave me be. And yes, yes, I know. I hope for the Renault T as much as you guys. I really, really want to drive the Renault T. Well, some of you anyway. But at this rate, it's not coming anytime soon, so let us actually look ahead to something realistic in the future. I'm hoping we start to see some new iterations of trucks coming into the game. So unlike ATS, ETS possesses a large variety of truck licenses, so we have no issue on that front. However, it could always grow and expand, some examples being the Mercedes-Benz Antos and the recently released Ibeco Stralis XP. These are just two examples that could come into the game in the near future. And look, variety is the spice of life, and they say. And if the game keeps growing and it keeps adding in more trucks, then nothing but good is going to come to the game. So I am hoping that these type of trucks are going to be coming to the future. Oh. And I do want the Renault T. I'm going to stress that again because I know after that joke, some people are going to be like, he's just being an asshole for the sake of it. Well, I am an asshole, but you know. I do want to see the Renault T come soon. And I'm just hoping and praying, literally, that that bridge has not been burnt because of certain ass clowns in this community. But we're not even going to talk about them at the moment. Let's roll straight on to number two. Number two, more truck tuning packs. Man, oh man, how I would kill for a Volvo, MAN, Iveco, Renault, or even a Mercedes cabin accessories pack. Alright, maybe not that last one. I'm joking, I'm joking, Mercedes lovers. Put your pitchforks away. I'm already due a bollocking from the Squirrel fanboys. I don't need Team Mercedes on me too. Do not hurt me. You know... I love the cabin accessories. They allow you to add personality to the interior of your truck. And I hope in the coming months that we're going to see other brand truck brands bestowed with interior packs. Look, now for some of you, these may seem inconsequential, but people rack up hundreds of thousands of miles in their trucks driving around Europe. And while most people who have never played this game maybe think adding in a plushy toy, GPS and a cooler may seem absolutely pointless and a waste of resources, for the hardcore enthusiasts, this adds realism to the game. It makes their truck their own. They can customize it how they want, put what they want in, just like they'll be able to in real life. And you know, let us be honest, more customization has never been a bad thing in any game, ever. Like, like give me an example, you know. I, I can't think of one. So, you know, I'm really hoping we do see more of these truck tuning packs coming in the future. Maybe some new universal accessories as well. I mean, there is a large selection, but the selection could always get bigger. But anywho, that's number two. Let's move swiftly on to number three. Number three, old parts of the map being reworked. Dude, but Germany is being reworked. What more do you want? SCS, small team, 200 people, hardworking, great company, best ever, truck sim, triangle, square, X, R1, R2. <laughs> Sorry, had to get that in this video. Look, it's a staple of my SCS videos, leave me be. Right, back to point. I was overjoyed by the fact that they are overhauling Germany because it was in desperate need. The stark contrast between the new DLC areas and the old maps is absolutely insane. I mean, look at this. It's definitely in need of some work to bring it back up to modern day levels. I hope after they've done this and they've completed Germany that people go and see to it really well and they really like it and that SCS consider taking a look at the UK as well. Look, I understand that the UK is not as popular and not a lot of people drive on it because there's that weird left-hand driver malarkey, and, you know, most of the people there are knobs. Again, please do not hurt me. The UK is still a valuable addition to the map. And a rework could make it phenomenal and a lot more popular for people to start driving and exploring. Speaking of reworks, Going East is another one that I believe is in serious need of a touch-up. It was D SES's first DLC and it does look a lot like Germany. It does need some work because it is, again, if you look at Scandinavia compared to Going East, it's, it's such a stark contrast. Um, 
But to be honest, I doubt SCS will be looking to put more money into improving a DLC. I could be wrong and they might rework it. I don't know. I just... I find it highly unlikely that they're going to go and rework on a DLC and then release that for free or something along those lines. But hopefully they'll prove me wrong. But overall, I do hope that a map rework for some of the older areas is on the table in the future. Not only for Germany, but in the UK and, you know, maybe other areas like the uh, Going East DLC. But righty-ho, let's move on to number four. Number four, more community events and more challenging events. SCS have been hitting it out of the park lately with the community events. Big Sur, Start Your Engines and many more have been a huge success and very popular with the community as well. I'll tip my hat to the SCS guys, fair play. Now for the future, they have said more events will be coming out, which is good to hear. But I would like to see bigger events and challenges. What do I mean by this? Well, recent events have seen most people breeze through these 12 journeys without any problems at all. So why don't we start bringing in a tier system and increasing the rewards over time? So what am I thinking about this? What I'm thinking is we could have a system where we have 12 deliveries, 24 deliveries and 36 deliveries and all of these having their own separate rewards as well. So we've still got our 12 journeys for the most casual gamers that they can get those completed and get all the rewards. But then those people that are the hardcore drivers and they'll end up doing those 12 deliveries in a week, they still have something to strive to over the next month or however long the event's duration is. So I'm going to use the Big Sur event as an example here. Let's say you complete 12 deliveries within the month. You get all the current rewards, plus the excavator, paint packs, all of that stuff, right? That's all good to go. You get that. Then let's say we take it up to 24 jobs that somebody completes. Let's give them another set of exclusive paint jobs. I don't know, maybe another plushy toy or another cabin accessory of some sort that they can put in their truck. Something to show off as prestigious for doing the 24 journeys. And plus they get all the previous rewards of the 12 journey as well. Then let's say we go up to 36, which is another plushy toy entry, maybe a prize draw entry for SCS merchandise or, you know, another prize, something along those lines. And why not something like a shout out in the blog or some form of recognition by SCS? Because let's be honest, 36 journeys at a minimum of 250 kilometers is a lot of work. And that will be a limited crowd of people who would get that done. But this is just one example I've got of adding more complex and bigger tides of tiering to these events and they'll help keep the community entertained and bringing them back onto ETS2, which I find is going to be nothing but beneficial for the game itself. But now finally that we've got that out of the way and I've kind of gone through that, let's move on to number five. Step number five, close to ties with Truckers MP. Oh, dude, you can't say that. SCS is a separate entity to multiplayer. SCS is a small team of 200 people working hard and making an amazing game. Oh, just fuck off. Yes, I know SCS are not tied to multiplayer and they are two separate entities. But let us be real for a second. They both need each other. They're the yin and the yang to each other. SCS's continued popularity and the reason it holds its place in Steam's most played games of the week on the regular basis is thanks to multiplayer. It brings in traffic of up to four to 5,000 users a night. A lot of people have bought this game as well for the sole purpose of convoying with their friends on multiplayer and have had no intention of playing this on single player. But to counterbalance on the other hand for a second as well, a big reason why the multiplayer mod has flourished is because of SCS continually working on the game. And that's made the multiplayer mod flourish and has seen the significant amount of traffic that it does get. And it's become one of the biggest mods out there. I mean, I cannot think of too many mods that are currently bolstering a community of four to 5,000 people playing every night. Now, so what am I suggesting with this point? Um, pretty much, I'm not hoping that SCS buys out the multiplayer mod or that SCS makes the mod stop. Of course not. I know SCS have a plan at some point to work on their own multiplayer, but let's be honest, that's a long, long way away, way, way, way away from ever becoming a thing. What I honestly am hoping for is just simple stuff, passing of technical data before a DLC or some technical support for the multiplayer game guys from time to time. Do you guys remember that ATS multiplayer debacle where the ATS server did not work because one of the updates caused problems? Now imagine if SCS and the multiplayer team worked together, they could have not had that problem and we wouldn't have had ever that issue of the ATS servers going out. Again, think of this from another sense. Think about this. If the multiplayer team got access to the map a week early, so let's say the new Oregon DLC, 
right? They got access to it to a week earlier, so multiplayer could update the map, get it in-game, and ready to go for the release day. Could you imagine the surge of traffic when ATS releases Oregon and the multiplayer update is available on the exact same day? The servers would be maxed out, which means you would have a humongous amount of Steam traffic. Guess what Steam traffic means? Steam traffic means higher listing for the game. Higher listing for the game means more people see the game. More people that see the game, the more likely they are to buy the game. You, you get the point. Look, this relationship is one that probably most people wouldn't have seen at the beginning. But it's one that has turned into um, something that's just completely helping both sides of this game. I mean, it helps SCS, it helps the, the community as a whole. And I really hope that these guys can forge a really strong relationship between the two. Because not only will it be good for both of the entities themselves, it's going to be great for us as customers and players of the game. So yeah, I'm definitely hoping, this is my big one that I'm hoping happens in the future. But right, there you go ladies and gentlemen, that is my five hopes for the future of ETS2. I hope you did enjoy the video, if you did, make sure to give it a like, subscribe for more, and why not let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Anywho, I'm going to sign off there. I have been Conflicts, you have been you. Peace out, guys. And once again, I will catch you all next time.